Welcome to my channel, Crafting with me, Indiana Jones, and welcome to my garden. Actually, I should invite all you little rabbits to come with me on an adventure into Mr. McGregor's garden. Just over the fence, let's hop on over. Mr. McGregor's garden is the location for the tale of Peter Rabbit and many of the adventures that take place there. So that's where our adventure will start today. So today's theme is Mr. McGregor's Garden, and I'll tell you a little more about this playlist later. But first and foremost, I want to introduce to you my idea of what a storybook or a fairy tale wreath would look like. So let's get started with this first item that I happened to find on the side of the road and what became my inspiration for the rest of this wreath. Now, it was dinged and dented and it was just on the side of a garbage can ready, ready to be thrown away. And the solar lights didn't work either, but you know, I, I saw a little bit of myself in this water pitcher because you know, it's like, um, I'm a little dinged and dented and sometimes my light's, not, my light's not completely on, but you know, I'm still fun and I still have a lot to uh, give. So yeah, I am reviving this little water pitcher for this wreath. Now I decided to add this beautiful blue color because after all Mr. McGregor's is part of Peter Rabbit's storytelling. So since this is his garden I thought this was like a perfect Peter Rabbit blue. If you've ever seen Peter Rabbit dressed up he always has this beautiful blue jacket. So I thought it would be nice to add this to my little storybook wreath. If you haven't read Peter Rabbit Please go ahead and, and read it. I know it's a children's story, but what a nice way to, to just relax on an afternoon and reading Peter Rabbit. And if not, I would say look up the story of Miss Potter in the movie. And it is such a touching tale. It really is such a sweet movie. So if you have a chance, maybe you can watch that as well. Now, after I added the blue, I'm going to add black onto the handles both on the top and on the side and then I decided to add a little bit of aging and rust and of course the best uh, recipe for rust is adding a little bit of cinnamon you can add cinnamon or paprika and it does the job because rust has more than just color it has a texture and the cinnamon adds that texture so perfectly so a little bit of Mod Podge and a little bit of cinnamon and voila you have instant rust so now that I've finished with this part, let me tell you a little more about the playlist that we have today. Today's theme is Mr. McGregor's Garden. If you know Peter Rabbit, you know that most of his adventures took place in Mr. McGregor's Garden. This was created by Tracy Vanover and the co-host is Dawn of Shabby Meets Bling. We have many other crafters and creators who have joined us, so I hope you enjoy the full playlist down below. Here is my grapevine wreath. Look at the size of this thing. And I bought this, believe it or not, last year at Michael's for only $3. I absolutely love this grapevine wreath, and I was waiting for a special occasion or a special project to use this one in particular because it has a kind of oval shape instead of just being perfectly round. So I thought how perfect they were probably getting rid of it because of the oval shape and yet it suited my project just perfectly. I hope you like the way that little uh, watering can came out. I really like the blue with the with the rust. Now, <laughs> a disclaimer, I understand that a watering can would not have all these lovely little holes in it. But it's decorative we know that right and besides i am going to add some lighting back into this watering can as it was originally designed for solar lights i don't have solar lights but you'll see what i do all i did was i tied or i wrapped the can the watering can to the grapevine wreath with some wire i thought this was the most secure thing to do i didn't want to use any glue for this just the wiring so I wired it in three different places and shake 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 it stayed in place again I apologize that I couldn't get my camera any higher to get the full wreath while I was working on it but we'll get through it together 
If this is your first time here, I want to thank you for spending a little time with me and I hope that I inspire you to create something beautiful for your home today. Now, I wanted to make sure that my wreath really reflected the storybook feeling. So of course I had to create like a wild meadow. So I thought this garland was perfect to add these greens to the bottom of the wreath to make it look like a wild English meadow. Next, I wanted to add some of those uh, pots, those flower pots. However, I didn't feel comfortable having the little terracotta pots because I was afraid they would fall off. So I'm using these seed starter, starter pots and I'm going to paint them, as you can see here, to look like terracotta pots. I thought this was a great idea of being able to incorporate the terracotta pot look without making it dangerous. I don't know, I was just worried about the wreath falling off and the terracotta pot you know just shattering to pieces so just using a little bit of paint and because it is already has that rough um exterior it looks like an aged terracotta pot not only with the orange i'm adding a little bit of green and white and uh, a little bit of baking powder or baking soda whatever you you can find to just age it a little bit and just you know mesh it in just blend it in and i think it looks fabulous now i needed some dirt and for me the easiest way to do this was get some old coffee pods i believe it or not i do save my coffee pods i don't you know throw them all well i don't keep them all all but i really try to you know open them up and you know get rid of the organic part i guess the coffee and then the plastic part separately so that it can be recycled and uh, so i thought this time I, i'll take some out and keep them for dirt since springtime is coming around we need some dirt so using a styrofoam uh, cone that I cut up to fit into the the pot all I'm doing is adding some hot glue and then I'm just putting it into the coffee dirt I guess I should call it coffee dirt and I actually used the little the little um, K cup in the pot itself to hold the little piece of styrofoam it works out perfectly because they do fit and I was also thinking if you don't have those little seedling pots you can even just paint those little coffee pods and make them look like t little terracotta pots I think I might do that in, in another project but for now this is what I'm doing now for the edges so that you wouldn't see the white edges I'm also covering that in my coffee grounds um, slash dirt and then I'm just going to put that little piece of styrofoam inside and you'll see it just it just all fit in so perfectly and that fit perfectly into the little pot as well and another disclaimer is although i'm not doing a lot of i'm doing a lot of different projects but it's all going to be part of the one big project which is the wreath so i hope that you can incorporate any one of these uh, cute little projects into your spring crafts now once i have my dirt i found this little twig or this little bunch of berries or blueberries that I had that was I bought them on clearance last year after spring and I literally think I paid maybe I don't know like I think it was like 49 cents it was 4.99 I paid 49 cents for this but I thought this was perfect for my Peter Rabbit or Mr. McGregor's garden wreath I really love the idea of a storybook wreath because you should be able to just look at the wreath and just uh, interpret or see the story of peter peter rabbit now i don't have a little rabbit to help me but i do have my little magical black cat kuru just helping me out just by being there she's just such a sweetheart so i'm going to add the little terracotta pots to i think i was watching someone in my on my phone there i think it was funny i'm adding my little terracotta pots to my wreath and that i am just going to glue on but because they're lightweight i'm not worried about them falling off because sometimes terracotta pots are just too heavy to add to a wreath in this manner but these are absolutely perfect To that second little pot I decided to add a few little pink flowers or I don't know if they're pink flowers or if they're supposed to look like mini succulents but I just thought it was perfect now you'll notice that I'm not going to use any really 
there are a few bright colors, but I'm trying to think of what a, you know, meadow filled with wildflowers, what that would look like. And yes, there's some muted tones or some fun colors as well, but I really am trying to keep the colors light and very similar to the illustrations of Beatrice Potter's books. And they were very muted and light colors, but still very beautiful and very rustic in a way. Now, speaking of colors, look at these beautiful coral flowers. I can't remember the name of these flowers, but these are new to Dollar Tree. I'd never seen these. So I just bought one bunch in, in that coral color and one bunch in white. And I thought it was cool because, you know, the coral color kind of reminds you of carrots. And it's. I, I just thought it was so pretty. So that little tiny pop of color, not so tiny actually, but that little pop of color to add to the rustic grapevine wreath and the wild garden, the wild grasses just beneath. I want to thank you again for stopping by and if you are new here to my channel, I would like for you to consider subscribing so you can come back week after week and have more and new inspirations each and every week. Now believe me, I work a full-time job and this part of my life is so fun and I enjoy sharing with others and that's my little kitty in the background and I really love to share with others especially if you're a smaller channel I would love you to be part of our community so we can help each other grow next I decided to add some of these beautiful lavender imitation lavender um, flowers I absolutely love them and I think these are some of the best florals from the Dollar Tree. Now, I actually had this in my stash already, luckily, um, as prices continue to increase at the Dollar Tree, but we won't talk about that. Only happy thoughts here. It's happening. What can we do? We can't do anything about it. But I really do love these lovely lavender flowers from the Dollar Tree. I have to, oh, and there's a little, oh no, she didn't like that one there. So Kudu is <laughs> lovingly pulling out the flowers as I'm putting them into the wreath. But you know, that's crafting with cats. What can I say? And next, I decided to upgrade these little carrots. These carrots are also from the Dollar Tree. But I didn't like those little stems that they had at the end of them. So I got these beautiful leaves. And I think they look much more like carrot leaves than those little... um. I don't know what you want to call them, I guess tendrils. I didn't get rid of them, but I just added those leaves just to make them look a little nicer. I should have painted them as well, but I actually like that they're a muted tone of orange and not, not too, too bright either. Again, these are from the Dollar Tree. They're still at $1.25 right now. <laughs> we'll see what they are. You know, maybe we should start like, you know, stocking up for next year. I don't know. Maybe after, after the holidays, I'll stock up on some of these items because... Who knows what price they'll be next year. So here I am trying to figure out how to position my carrots. And I thought, you know, maybe I'll just have one sticking straight up so it looks like it's coming straight out of the ground or something. But uh, yeah, I think that was the most difficult placing was the carrots. I was struggling with the little carrots. And again, if you don't have the carrots, you don't have to go out and buy them. If you have orange fabric or if you have even if you have like just plain burlap you can make your own carrots out of burlap and a little bit of cotton stuffing and all you have to do is paint the burlap orange and there you have it you have your own little carrots try to find ways of making things economical like i am doing here because i really wanted a little shovel and i think i found one and it was like something ridiculous like 5.99 or something and i'm like ah no i don't think so so <laughs> i took this old paintbrush that i was going to throw away anyway and i used that as the handle and i just used um leftover cardboard and there you go it's from tape and then all i'm going to do is use some tin foil or aluminum foil what's the difference between tin foil and aluminum foil things that come into my mind while i'm making these voiceovers and luna once again is here making sure that we are following quality control procedures using the correct type of tin foil or aluminum foil and somehow that was very into the crink crinkling sound was very very interesting to her so there i am crazy you have that problem when your cats get super interested in what you're doing and why i don't know it's like it's just crafting cat you know but anyway i really enjoy having their company 
So I decided to make this shovel look a little more realistic by aging it a little. So I added some, you know, some a little bit of Mod Podge and a little bit of paint to make it look like rust. Of course, I added first a little bit of paint and then the Mod Podge so that I can add my cotton, my cotton? No, not my cotton. <laughs> Not a cotton. I'm talking about my cinnamon. Always add a little bit of cinnamon whenever you're doing rust. You can also use paprika because it looks a little redder, but cinnamon works just fine. But we're not going to stop there. No, 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 because, you know, this is a shovel in a garden and I think it would have more than just rust on it. So once again, I'm going back to my trusty Mod Podge and going back to my coffee pods. There you go. And it's so easy. Just add a little bit of Mod Podge, add a little bit of, of not cinnamon this time, coffee, and you got instant dirt. What about that? And you're saving the planet because, you know, you're using that coffee. By the way, coffee is supposed to be very good for your plants. I'm not very, I, you know, I got to start gardening one of these days because I'm not really a good gardener. So yeah, maybe I'll dry that. But I've always heard that coffee is good for plants. Now, check out my little bunny. Look at my bunny. That bunny is usually $16.99 and I get it. 40% off would be like, what, like $10, $11 or something. However, I got this bunny for $3 because he um, doesn't have an arm and it just so happens I don't need that arm on that side it's actually very convenient for me so again something that other people would think you know you could just discard or something like that and I was able to get it at a much lower price maybe I paid too much for it but it was in good condition otherwise except for the missing arm and if I knew how to use straw and make an arm I would probably do that but I, I don't have that kind of straw to make an extra arm but it doesn't matter because I don't need it so I'm filling up now the basket had little eggs, little Easter eggs, but I didn't want this necessarily to be Easter. I wanted this to be, you know, Peter Rabbit. So I took the Easter's out. Did I throw them away? No, of course not. Never throw anything away if you can help it, but don't become a hoarder. Know the difference. Anyway, <laughs> and now I have secured. Now I have to show you, I have an issue with my desk right now because it was filled with cats. So I could not place my big, huge wreath onto my desk. So I had to wire up the peter rabbit onto the wreath while it was resting on my chair and yes that's my robe it's my it was it was one of my mom's leftover robes so i, I love wearing it especially on crisp even crisp evenings here in miami it's like it's 58 or something I, I know i know don't complain right anyway and as you can see i'm using these beautiful fairy lights and placing them in the um water watering can so that it looks like water is coming out of the watering can and once again I create a dilemma for myself because I love this so much I want to put it on the front door but then I love this so much I don't want to put it on the front door because I don't want it to get ruined now I decided to create this cute little sign using this this black and white gingham I know it doesn't match the blue and white gingham but I think it still matched because I would think Mr. McGregor would wear gingham or at least plaid shirts. So I wanted to make a little sign that said Mr. McGregor's garden. And I didn't have a white pen. So this is actually a nail pen. I don't know if you've seen those, <laughs> but I had bought it at the Dollar Tree and I was like, oh, this is perfect. Instead of trying to trying to write it out with like paint. Although I thought afterwards, well, it would have looked more rustic and cuter if it was written out in paint. But I just took my time and enjoyed creating Mr. McGregor's garden sign and added some embellishments as well. Maybe Mrs. McGregor was the one that made the sign and that's why it's so nice and neat because I'm sure she was very proud of her beautiful garden and all the hard work that her husband did. I also hope that you're very happy with the hard work I did on this wreath because I really really enjoyed making it and I'm also very proud of it. So let's take another look.
Thank you so much to Tracy and Dawn for putting together this wonderful playlist. Please check out both of their channels linked down below in my description and the full playlist with all the creators that joined in to visit Mr. McGregor's Garden for Spring. I hope you enjoyed our little adventure into Mr. McGregor's Garden and that you're inspired to create something beautiful for spring. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to come back for more. And as I always say, stay safe, be kind, God bless each and every one of you. And remember to live the adventure. I'll see you again soon.